In this video, I'm at the British Motor Museum, specifically the Jaguar Daimler Heritage Trust. We've been there before, we've got some fantastic cars, including this very rare four-wheel drive Jaguar XJS. But more excitingly, is this guy. You, <laughs> may, you, may, you may remember Neil Campbell from Practical Classics magazine, and you were working on Practical Classics when I was working on Classic Cars. That's Car right, Weekly. yeah, we've known each other a while. A long time ago. But now you're head of collections here at the Jaguar Daimler Heritage yes, Trust. Yes, so I'm the vehicle collection manager. So that's that's the... it, I'll get the <laughs> roll right one day. So I look after the vehicles in the, in the collection that we vehicles have. Vehicles such as these, um, basking in the sunlight. Basking in the sun, indeed. So we do like to get our cars out. So as is like a, we see it as a living collection. Mm -hmm. So we aim to have about about seventy percent of our cars MOT'd and on the road and running uh, wow. out of all of them. Yeah, we got about what? we got pushing one hundred and eighty cars now in the collection. Crikey, so that is a good few. It's quite a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, some of them uh, can't be on the road because they're prototypes and yeah, yeah, yeah. and things like that. Yeah. But of the cars that are road going, we do like to keep them. Yeah, no, it must be said, even some of your non-road cars are running. Yeah, well, that's true, yeah. yeah as we do. can see in this clip of the uh, XJR5 running a little earlier today. Crikey! I think it caught. Here is the XJR5 that was running very noisily earlier. Good to see. But what, why are these cars being prepared? What is actually going so on? We've got a big, big event coming up in a couple of weeks, Coventry Motor Fest. Oh yeah, uh, which, which I think you've had a little to do with over the years. Co-founder of that as well. Yeah. 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 So, but we, but the trust always do this event because it's very the home, hometown yeah. of Jaguar and Daimler. So um, we're prepping the XJR5 to go to that to be demonstrated mm -hmm. on the track there. Um, it's not been, it's usually in the main museum over with the BMM in the Jaguar racing section. Yeah. But we've pulled it out to, to get it going. It's about seven years, I think, since it was last wow. really used. Yeah, yeah. Um, usually we use the XGR9 for things like this, but that's going, well, it went this morning actually to. <laughs> we saw that leaving earlier, yes. <laughs> to to Le Mans, Le Mans. Uh, yeah. For the Le Mans 24 hour 100 celebration. So mm. um, as a backup car, we're very fortunate to have other cars yeah, yeah, like yeah. this. So yeah, it's just a typical of the stuff we do in, in the workshop. Um, the broad speed XJC is a, this here is a, our backup car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's a nice backup car to have. So if, if this, the XJR5 can't go for some reason, we'll take the broad speed with us. Not um, a bad plan B at all. No, it's a good plan B as plan Bs go. Yeah. Um, and then we've also got other stuff in the workshop as well. So the little Kenilworth sidecar there we've just restored. Okay, let's go and have a So the volunteers here who work with the JDHT have restored it. So it's a, it's a very nice pattern of restoration. We didn't want to do too much to it. Mm. So this was, we were alerted to this actually by, by um, someone we know and said, you know, there's, there's this sidecar on eBay, you want to have a look? So, so we bought it, it wasn't particularly expensive. Mm -hmm. and. It's been a great volunteer project. They've been able to work on it yeah. um, out of here. We've, we've so what's the relevance for those who don't know? Well, it's, the, it's, it's, one of the, it's a really late one. It's a 1937 SS uh, sidecar. So one of the very last ones wow. um, that they were building because it's obviously Jaguar, as people may or may not know, started out as a sidecar company. Uh, yes, that's where Blackpool. the SS came from, which, which was not a favourable term by the time of the Second World no, War, which is why, which is why Jaguar was seen as a better bet, but swallow sidecars is what it was. So it's not just, I mean, like I say, it's not just cars, it's its also all, anything to do with the company's history like this. Yeah, and this over here, is that one yeah, of the four-cylinder? It is, XK, yeah. J, oh, sorry, XK engines. Wow. It is, so these are these are very rare, although I think we've pretty, got, pretty much got most of them <laughs> that exist. Yeah, have um, you got one on display? There's a head through there on Ascendant, display. Yeah. Um, and we've got another engine tucked away. So it's the sort of thing, it's a nice volunteer project. I mean, you can see something's happened to it. It's been yeah. dropped at some point, so we'll have to repair that. But um, yeah, this is all dusty and up in, stored away in a shed. So mm -hmm. we're, we're working through it to get it display ready. So yeah, so a it. fascinating intro, engine because um, one of these was used for setting speed records right. in, in, an MG, in an MG, of yeah. all things. But it, it was never deemed suitable for production in the end. They stuck no. just with a six cylinder version. And in fact, the MG is over in the main museum, I think. Oh, well, there yeah, you go. Yeah, so yeah. This, this is the plan is to get this, 
get this in display condition and then mm. we can display the engine next to the MG. Wow. So we're now in the main collection building, which is still an amazing Aladdin's cave of magnificence. And uh, you've got a per rather personal project in here. Yes, it was uh, only brought in yesterday. Gosh, so this we is, timed it well. Yes, yeah. This is the XK8 Mule. Mm -hmm. So this is one of my favorite cars in the collection, I have to say, I know I'm strange, but. Sorry, I'm just, this is Hubnut, you're, you're yeah, amongst the right sort of people. I love this car. Yeah. Um, there was some doubt over whether it would be kept in the collection a few years ago, mainly because of how it looks yeah. and the condition it's in at the moment. It, it is intriguing, isn't it? But yeah, it's a great example. And this, this sort of stuff never exists. So <gasps> Escort rear lights. Yeah, they're escort rear lights. So it's sort of nod to the Ford heritage of the whole, like, the whole sort of era that it's from. Yeah. But this here uh, is a great example of hard camo. Mm -hmm. So you'll see this here is specifically designed to make it look like an XJS. Mm -hmm. So from profile shots, if it was caught out testing. The only problem with these sorts of hard camo is that it's absolutely terrible if you want to test the car. Yeah. Because it adds loads of weight. Mm -hmm. it, it completely destroys the handling. Uh, the aerodynamics and the wind noise and, you know, the noise vibration, the harshness tests you do are completely useless because Oh, I'm loving the gaffer tape over structural gaffer tape on this. Yeah, side. exactly. So some of it's only half of the camo's on, as you can see. Yeah. But it kind of gives a nod this side here where the, the wings painted mm -hmm. to try and break the lines of the car. The old off, dazzle so, camouflage. Which is why that nowadays all the cars are wrapped in that camo yeah, stuff yeah. with the zigzag stripes. And that's why, because you can disguise what the car looks like to a degree. But mm -hmm. You can also still do the tests you need to do in order to get the car yeah. signed off. Wow. So it's a fantastic thing to see. Yeah, and it's just so rare to see something like this. It's a 1993. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's the earliest XK8 anywhere in the world. Blimey. It's when did they come out? 95? It was 96, I think. 96, wow. So yeah. it's very, very early. So it's an early car. Um, it did hot weather testing, this one, mm -hmm. um, which is why it's got all the little bits of cotton on the windscreen there. It was to test the airflow from air conditioning and stuff. Ah. Um, so that's what it was used for, but it was actually, it used to be red and you can still see some of it showing through the paint. Mm -hmm. If you have a look here and there, but it was a red show car uh -huh. and it was allegedly this particular car, which got the actual project for X100 signed off wow. by Ford because they were quite keen to, to not spend the money. Yeah, because we are standing next to the failed attempt to replace the XJS. Well, you see, I. So we, we, one of the volunteers here worked on the project when okay. it was new and he pulled me up on this the other day because we sort of insinuate that in what we've said on mm. the Silent That was Salesman. certainly my belief, but it looks yeah, like I'm going to be wrong as well. No, so he actually brought in some documents that he had from back in the day and it shows that yes, it was cancelled under Ford, mm -hmm. but him and the engineers had already come to the conclusion a long time before that the car was no good yeah. and it wouldn't be made. But what they did do with this is they used lots of techniques on it that hadn't been seen before within the company, like computer-aided design, that sort of thing. So four-wheel drive system, which they mm -hmm. went to use on later in later vehicles. Yeah. So in actual fact, even though this car didn't come to fruition as a Jaguar, a lot of things in this car did see the light of day later on. Yeah. And of course, the basic idea for this car became the DB7 later on. That's very true, yeah. So, you know, it wasn't a, a, a wasted, experiment but yeah but yeah. This, sh this shows you just how close they got really isn't yeah, it yeah it, 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 it's it's quite a nuanced thing i think people like to blame ford for a lot of things mm. and i think it's a good story right ford come in and cancel everything yeah, and, yeah. you know but i don't think that is actually what happened this car needed to be cancelled because it wasn't good yeah, enough it was the right decision um, I, I certainly accept that yeah as, but as it looks as beautiful it and all yeah. the people the stylists involved with it really wanted it to be built because it looked beautiful and there was nothing like it on the, in the market at that time in the 80s so it would have been a success, I'm sure, had it not been compromised during the engineering um, stages by trying to get four-wheel drive systems in it yeah, and stuff, yeah. which meant you, the cabin wasn't as big and it wasn't as comfortable and ergonomically it wasn't right. So as a, as a car, it didn't work, mm. but as, a, as an individual pieces of design and engineering, it, do, it really did work and it set, set the company up for yeah. the next sort of 15 years. Super. I'm just wondering if there's anything else I haven't seen before. I don't remember seeing this one. Yeah, so 
This is another concept which, again, people were saying should have been built. So, uh, yeah, it's one thing to build the concept and one yeah. thing to actually put it in production. So, it, I mean, companies are littered with ideas like this, which people mm -hmm. say you should have built it, but in actual fact, you might not have been able to have built it. Um, but it goes to show where the company was going, and that's what yeah, I like yeah. about these ones. You get to f you get a feeling of XF in some of these. You do. Yeah. The headlight shape here, very reminiscent of the first sort of XFs that mm -hmm. came out. So you can see the way that the, the company was going um, with its design. But again, it, I mean, these are cars obviously that don't run and we wouldn't run. Um, well, yeah, they are just Because they're basically figures. models. And yeah, if, yeah. You, if you look here, unfortunately, we, people walk through here and oh, they, no. with bags and they knock them and the wing mirrors get broken off. and. It's a constant battle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Uh, but th you know. that's what you get because this is an accessible place. You can come in and you can get close to the cars, and you can see them. That's one of the things I absolutely love. Yeah, and it's something that we're passionate about. We, we, you know, that's why we that's why we keep a lot of our cars on the road and keep them MOT. Yeah, and so people can we can get out there and see. It's a big part of our remit as the trust is to education. Yeah. Um, so it's not just about preserving the company's history. It's also about educating people, and mm. it doesn't mean, necessarily mean about Jaguar. It's about engineering. It's about trying to get young people into this sort of uh, area of expertise and, yeah, and work yeah. and very important so it is important and you mm. know with the British Motor Museum as well sort of working together we have a you know a lot of education mm. remit between us super so you're relatively new to the role you came in what December, December yeah so, so about so six months in what, what are your hopes going forward Tony Merigold who is here before me, he's done a fantastic job. But all of this is a testament to him. All of the yeah, the displays, the old, the displays, the old SS doors from the this factory. Was, this building was always designed to be a purely storage unit for yeah. storing excess cars or overspill collection cars. It was never meant to be like this, like a museum. Mm -hmm. And we still don't really refer to it as a museum because it's not because we are essentially homeless, really. Which is why our digital exhibition. That we've oh yeah, yeah, digital so exhibition. .com. There will be my plug -in. link in the description below to that. So that is, that, that is basically what, what we would like to do. We've designed a virtual building and had a virtual exhibition in there using our Excellent. archive material and, and stuff yeah, like well, that. So that takes you through the life of and the And takes founder. you about hit the founder, but it's it, that's a great, great example of our educational remit because it's not about cars, it's about a, a visionary about a man yeah. and a, a, someone who made stuff happen. Well, yeah, the, the man who made all these so, cars possible. Yeah. yeah, so it's you know, we're not we're not a fuddy duddy organisation, although we ought to be because it, the the name sort of made the Jaguar Daimler Heritage Trust, you know. But we're always looking forward to what we can do next, mm. and um, and you know, just taking these items these cars these these things because it's more than a piece of metal is it, it yeah for me it's a part of history mm, it takes you back nice. to that part that part of time and and you know a lot of people now especially with the older veteran cars because they've got no relevance to most people None. yeah but we still keep them running we still display them we still go out driving in them i think it's important to to, to show people things they wouldn't usually see yeah super. i mean this xf here for uh, xe rather so this this is one that we got recently, mm -hmm. which was gifted to us from Jaguar Land Rover. So we, we still get cars, first and last cars, um, prototypes to add to the collection. Mm -hmm. So while it on the outside of it, it's quite- Yeah, it's just boring gray saloon, surely. Ordinary car, right? But when you start looking at the little details, it's the little, the funny wheels. So this is a, a Performance E model. So this was the one that they were trying to get 70 of to the gallon out of oh, wow. to sort of compete with blue motion yeah, yeah. stuff and all of that um which was i don't know how successful it was i don't think this was actually sold in the uk i think it was sold in different other european markets in germany there's a few mm -hmm. um but not generally seen in the uk they people in the uk tend to like their cars quite highly spec'd so yeah you know yeah funny, you don't, you don't buy a jaguar because you're hunting yeah, mpg exactly. yeah but it's a good example of what the company were doing and where they were thinking it's chassis 65 if you have a look so it's a really early car um, wow. so it is worthy of our collection and you know at the moment it's not particularly interesting to most people i doubt anyone would stop and look at it no but this is the history but it's of the building future it for the future yeah, yeah. if we don't don't save examples of these cars now they'll be gone and you know we won't exactly have them. I mean, so, so presumably you must have some storage elsewhere because 
Yeah, we do. So you can't see all the cars. Here, but no, you, do you chop can't. And change we do. We well, do. I mean, I'm trying to refresh the display here more often now. Yeah. Um, and it'd be, it'd be great to have a an actual exhibition space where we could do curated exhibitions about certain things. And we do yeah, that yeah. to a degree. Like the cars at the front, we generally have enough. There's a reason why they're there because we've been using them because it's an anniversary year, or et yeah, cetera, yeah. et cetera. Um, but yeah, it's, it is difficult. So we've got cars stored in several locations. We've got a, a, another gallery in Coventry Transport Museum. Mm -hmm. We've got the Jaguar gallery there with a whole load of our cars. And we've just spent a load of money on that actually making it a bit fresher. We had this recently, we moved some cars out to try and refresh it. And then we had some people complaining that their favorite car was no longer in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's, it's always it's the way. It's a juggling act. I'm, yeah. I'm waiting for the Dame of the Conquest to come back. That's the one for me. Yes, yeah. I drove that car many years ago and haven't seen it since. So, no, that's tucked away, that one. But yeah, I, I, it must be a nightmare trying to pick what to display and what to not. But I mean, but, things like this, like the, the SSs, I love the, I love the pre-war cars. Yeah. So a lot of these are now MOT'd. Mm -hmm. um, we're yet to really find a use for them. <laughs> but if they're MOT'd, it means we can use well, them. Well, I, I think I'll just have to come and drive them. Because, uh, yeah, I've absolutely. only driven one SS. Yeah, yeah. And it is this, is, a, this is fantastic. Yeah, such an important part of the Jaguar story. Because this well, is I, like pre-Jaguar. I, pre I didn't, I didn't like this car initially because it's so blingy with the paint job and everything but it is it's, yeah when you get outside catching. in the sun yeah and you're actually driving in it and, you, and everyone's looking at you and mm. you know it's fantastic one of 13 known survivors wow. yeah and then this one down here is one i don't think i've seen before oh yes the swift yeah so yeah. austin swallows are quite well known that's what swallow side cars were doing that was their first steps really wasn't it into cars was doing bodies for different chassis. And this one here, Everyone knows the Austin ones, but... I always call the swallow-bodied Swift. I don't call it... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, swallow-bodied Swift. The swallow good, good, Swift. Good plan, yeah. Um, and this has got a... Because I, I grew up in Coventry and the factory where this car, the chassis and everything was made is still there. It's now mm -hmm. a hotel, a Nibis hotel. And I used to walk past it regularly. So it's... I really love this car. Yeah. Uh, it was in storage. Uh, we pulled it out. We got it MOT'd. And rather than put it back into storage again, I've just squished all the cars together closer <laughs> so we can fit an extra one Well, it in. stops people squeezing in. So. It stops people, yeah, it stops yeah. all of that. So there was a method behind the madness, but that caused a lot of issues. People couldn't get up the side and have a look at yeah, the side. Yeah. But yeah, it's always a balancing act. But really I, difficult. Yeah, I mean, this is great. It's, it's not bad to drive either, actually. Okay. I have to say, it's not as, not as bad as it could be. <laughs> mm. Oh, well, there you go. I might have to come back again. Then. Yeah. But Absolutely. Super. Well, yeah, it's good to see you settling in. It's looking um, very impressive. It's nice to know things are afoot. And uh, yeah, I wish you all the best of it. Thank you very much for talking Cheers, to Ian. us. And uh, we shall see you in a future video. Don't forget you can come here. This is part of the British Motor Museum. Effectively, this is in their collection center. So do come along and enjoy the magnificent sight. And see you in a future video.